character's full name is Constantino Bartolomeo. St- <laughs> Can you tell that today's video is sponsored by Vessi Shoes? Probably, because these are all Vessi Shoes. More on them in a bit. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. This one written by Kevin, read by me, your host, Simon. Lesser known conspiracy theories. <laughs> the ninth video in a row I've recorded about conspiracy theories. I think I just went on a conspiracy theory topic binge. And uh, I like reading about them. I love laughing at them because they're usually ridiculous. And then sometimes I like agreeing with them and being like, holy shit, this one's real. <laughs> Oh, which is mental. Let's jump in. Uh, we talked a lot about conspiracy theories. I'm changing the position of my water. Don't mind me. Uh, on this channel, because there are uh, lots of alleged conspiracy theories out there, including ones that you probably haven't heard of. Sure, everybody knows that the government is run by the Illuminati, who are also lizard people from outer space. And even though those alien lizard people would have mastered intergalactic travel in order to get to Earth, not necessarily, Kevin. People always, it's not intergalactic. That would have mean they come from another galaxy. It may be interstellar interstellar travel, like stars within our galaxy. They could have come from there. The intergalactic's a lot more difficult, I guess. Nerd. It's much further. Although if you could travel across the solar system, you'd probably do to another galaxy, right? Just take a little bit longer. It'd be like if you can drive to another town, you could drive to another country. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. But they still needed Stanley Kubrick's help to fake the moon landing. But that's not because they couldn't give us the technology to fly to the moon. It's because they didn't want astronauts to actually go into space and see with their own eyes that the Earth is flat. Wow, when you start combining these different theories together, it begins to sound a bit ridiculous. I wanted to go off on a whole bit about the psychology behind why conspiracy theories are appealing to people, but there are several different reasons, so it would result in a much longer intro than Simon is going to tolerate. You bang on, Kevster! The shortened, condescending version of that is that conspiracy theories make people feel like brilliant, unique snowflakes in an otherwise confusing, conformist world. I feel like a deer in the headlights of love. Basically, conspiracy theorists, like those kids in high school who uh, make up listening to some obscure punk band their entire identity. Phantom Time Hypothesis One of my friends growing up liked to brag about being a descendant of Charmaine. <laughs> This one, I just it's like, I feel like I got a disclaimer. Everyone's like, it's Charlemagne. I'm like, it's not. I mean, they're both acceptable pronunciations, and I'm I'm going with Charmaine because that's the one I prefer. Okay, or Charlemagne. Not bad, not bad. Have you heard? of the brand Vessi. If you haven't, you've probably not seen this show before because they sponsor me a lot because you guys love Vessi, I love Vessi, everyone loves Vessi. This sneaker, this trainer, as we'd say in the UK, they'll probably ever go at me. They'll be like, use the word sneaker fact, boy. <laughs> I'm like, okay. This sneaker will change your life. That's not an overstatement. The shoes, I, I used to wear different shoes, like different types of shoes for different occasions, everything like that. Now I just wear Bessies. There is no other shoe that I wear because they are the best. Not only do they look extremely cool. Look at this. Look at this great looking shoe. Look at this shoe. Is that more your style? Is this more your style? They say, I'm, I say that you're wearing Bessies right now. I'm not. I'm wearing my slippers. <laughs> I have some office slippers. I think Bessie actually makes slippers, but they haven't sent them to me yet. So I'm just wearing my regular slippers. But as soon as I go home, I put my Bessie's back. I actually put my Bessie boots on. Because it's still raining. It's kind of spring weather right now. Basically, these shoes, not only do they look awesome, they're 100% waterproof because they're made of something called Dymatex. That isn't water resistant. That isn't like, oh, you get a little splash on there and it's fine. It's like, no, you can dump your sh I was out this weekend in the countryside with my kids. My kid lately is super into Peppa Pig and is always like, Dad, let's jump in muddy puddles. Let's jump in muddy puddles. I'm like, only if you're wearing your boots. She's like, Dad, you're not wearing boots. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> And I realize it might send the wrong message because she just sees me jumping in there with regular shoes. <laughs> and I always insist she wears boots. But that's because she doesn't have Bessies. She probably should. Do Bessies make kids' shoes? <laughs> I feel like I should know that. Look, Dymatex is what keeps all of the water out. They keep you warm in winter. They keep you cool in summer. They're comfortable. They're durable. They're breathable. They're grippy. Jeez, what more do you need from a shoe? There is nothing better. So, go to vessi.com slash blaze. Use the code blaze for 15% off your order. Plus, they've got free shipping to countries like, oh, they've given me the, the short versions. <laughs> now, I know that's Canada. That's US. That's Australia. That's Japan. TW? Taiwan? KR? Korea? I could be getting these completely wrong. SGP? I can't even start to guess what SGP is. It can't be Singapore, can it? SGP, you can get free shipping from Bessie. And now back 
to today's video. I never believed him, and neither would have Herbert Illig. Born in Bavaria, Illig was a member of a special organization with a long, unpronounceable German name that I won't torture Simon with. In English, they were the Society for the Reconstruction for, of Human and Natural History. They focused on catastrophism and historical revisionism, challenging the beliefs of mainstream historians. Historical revisionism should be pretty self-explanatory, but catastrophe what sort of word is that? But catastrophism is the idea that the Earth was shaped by a series of sudden, violent events rather than more gradual things like erosion and continental drift. Among <laughs> it would have to be pretty f***ing catastrophic. It's like, how did the continents break up? Well, a giant asteroid come down and smashed them to pieces. So it's got nothing to do with plate 10. No! It's a big asteroid. It flew right over me and blasted a car with its laser vision. Among the revisions to history first put forth by Illig in his 1991 paper is that Charmaine didn't actually exist, nor did Pope Leo III, the man who crowned Charmaine as the first Holy Roman Emperor. In fact, as far as Illig was concerned, the entire early Middle Ages didn't exist. The years 614 to 911, none of it was real. The entire stretch of 297 years was a period of phantom time that never actually took place. Those three centuries and all documentation of events that took place during that time were wholly manufactured as part of a conspiracy between Holy Roman Emperor Otto III, Pope Sylvester II, and possibly Emperor Constantine VII of Byzantium. You made those words up. Nothing between 614 and 911 AD ever happened, and the entire Carolingian dynasty was a complete work of fiction concocted by these men. Obviously, this raises a big question. Why? <laughs> Why would the Emperor and the Pope want to make up 300 years of historical events? That already sounds like more trouble than it could possibly be worth, and we haven't even gotten to their motivation yet. According to Illig, their motivation was that the year 703 was stupid. What's the point of being Holy Roman Emperor or the Pope in some dumb, boring year like 703? No, 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 these men wanted to adjust the calendar so that history would remember them as having been in charge during the year 1000 AD. Not only would that make them seem cooler historically, but it could serve them politically to create three centuries of made-up history, including the story of the very first Holy Roman Emperor, to help legitimize Otto III as the rightful emperor. Well, that's fine, but everyone, everyone at the time is going to be like, what? <laughs> you can't just say there was 300 years just slotted in there that didn't exist. That's insane. What the f*** is this piece of sh**? You see, the Roman Empire was in a bit of turmoil. Otto had been elected the king of Germany when he was only three years old, but his cousin essentially kidnapped him and tried to take the throne for himself until the Pope made him give Otto back to his mother. Otto would become the Holy Roman Emperor about 15 years later. It was a pretty wild time, full of colourful characters like a dude named Henry the Quarrelsome, and there was even an anti-Pope, Boniface the Seventh. Honestly, the actual stuff that happened was crazy enough that you don't need to to introduce a wacky conspiracy theory to make it interesting. Of course, to introduce such a theory, Illig was going to need some pretty solid evidence. Let me guess, he found it! No, of course he didn't, because this is not accepted history, and it's in fact utter nonsense. To start, Illig felt historians relied far too heavily on written sources when determining the history that took place during 614 to 911. This is a bizarre complaint to have, since writing down history is generally how we record it. It's also a lot more reliable than building giant monuments like Stonehenge and just assuming that people will understand what it was supposed to mean. The people who come back and they're like, you don't know what Stonehenge is, it's f***ing obvious, come on, it's obvious, you don't know what it is? However, Illig claims that there's no archaeological evidence that can be dated back to the early Middle Ages period. That sounds pretty hard to believe. We found stuff that is much older than that, so how could there be an entire period of 300 years with no archaeological evidence at all? Well, the trick is radiocarbon dating. You see, there are lots of artifacts that scientists claim are from that time period, but the theory contests that their dating techniques are inaccurate. What do you mean you don't agree with me? Do you know who you're dealing with? But the biggest bombshell is the calendar. In 582, Pope Gregory XIII commissioned a bunch of mathematicians and astronomers to fix the Julian calendar and create the Gregorian calendar. There's only one difference between the two calendars, which is the absence of certain leap years. In the Julian calendar, every year divisible by four was a leap year. This was great for over a thousand years, but it was starting to get misaligned with reality. The Gregorian calendar updated it so that a year divisible by 100 was no longer a leap year. Basically, every hundred years, the Gregorian calendar would be shifted away from the Julian calendar by one day. Oh, when the calendar was created, they should have had to shift it by 13 days, but they only had to shift it by 10. This difference of three days can be accounted for by the 300 years of phantom time that never really existed. Say what you want about the other supposed evidence, but this is pretty airtight, right? 
I don't know, it's confusing and also doesn't really sound it. No offense, but it sounds like some fucking commie gobbledygook. Of course not. Yes, if the calendar shifted one day every hundred years, then it would need to be shifted by 13 days, and yes, it was only shifted by 10. Wait, if the calendar shifted one day every hundred years, then it would need to shift 13 days. Oh, okay, for 1,300... I'm confused. For 1,300 years? I don't get it. But it was only shifted by 10, but that's not because there were 300 years that didn't exist. It's actually because Illig missed the additional caveat. They added that every year divisible by 400 would still be a leap year, thus removing three of the shifts that would have existed in the calendar. That's why, can you imagine Illig's like, oh no, can't believe I missed that. I guess I'm wrong. But the thing is, people get locked into their beliefs, so he's like, that still won't be enough for him. He'll just be like, no, 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 I still believe it. Because people really like to stick to their opinions, even when they've been shown that their opinions are objectively wrong. Which is fascinating, and kind of broken human brain example. Nah. Nah. I don't believe it. That's why the year 2000 was a leap year, even though normally a century is not, and why the phantom time hypothesis is total bullshit. But hey, if you want to ignore all the written evidence as being lies and ignore and ignore all the physical evidence because you think science is wrong, then, well, that's totally your call, isn't it? After all, the ideas that science is a lie and everything you read except this is misinformation are the hallmarks of any good conspiracy theory. Get your ass to Mars. Wouldn't it be cool if you could travel through time and space? Well, apparently you can, and you've been able to do it for the past 50 years. All you needed to do was be selected as a child by DARPA, the Department of Defense's R&D agency, to participate in experiments, or maybe you had to be selected as a young adult. It's not 100% clear when they were selected. According to presidential hopeful Andrew Basiago, who apparently is or at least was a well-regarded lawyer out of Seattle, he was one of the people selected for this top-secret mission. The operation code named Project Pegasus was DARPA's time travel and teleportation initiative. That's not a real thing, though. That's not real. We'd know about that. Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not going to lie. They had us. We weren't defeated, but they had us. Not only was it extremely successful, but if elected, Basiago would be the second time traveler in the White House. You see, it was during one of their frequent trips to Mars. This guy was a lawyer and running for president. The Basiago first met a young Barack Obama. Of course... Back then, he went by the name Barry Sotero. We've already got a lot of great stuff going on with this conspiracy. We have government lies, secret futuristic technology, and possibly even a little bit of an Obama Bertha conspiracy mixed in, as Barry Sotero was the nickname under which Obama was enrolled into an Indonesian school, where he was mistakenly listed as an Indonesian citizen. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. That's already the makings of a great conspiracy, but it gets better. Because who created the time machine and teleportation device that DARPA was using in Project Pe Pegasus? If you guess Nikola Tesla, then you're correct. And if you didn't guess Nikola Tesla, then you obviously aren't well-versed enough in conspiracies, because, well, it's always Tesla. Basiago began revealing his time-traveling exploits in 2012, while ramping up for his presidential bids both in 2016 and 2020, neither of which fared particularly well, as you might have guessed. Yeah, dude, you can't get elected by if you say you're a time traveler because people are just going to think you're a bit mad. Because you are a bit mad, allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> but he was committing to revealing the truth of this technology to the American public, while Obama, a fellow Mars traveler, was helping to keep it hidden and keep the American public ignorant. Basiago was also campaigning for president on a platform of increased spending for Project Pegasus to upgrade the time travel and teleportation equipment that the, go that the government had access to. Did this guy get, like, sections after this? Because it seems like he needs to be. What do you Americans call that? Where, like, someone, they're like, you need to, is he a doctor? And then they make you. Like, the courts are like, you gotta go. <laughs> like, it's not a choice. <laughs> it's like court-ordered, um, you know, anger management or Alcoholics Anonymous, except for when they think that you've lost your marbles. Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> As a reminder, everything I can find says this dude was really a well-respected lawyer before all of this happened. Also, if I was this dude's doctor, I'd be like, let's just give him an MRI to make sure there's nothing growing in there. <laughs> Allegedly, in my opinion. So, okay, so let's humor the raving madman for a minute. Allegedly, in Kevin's opinion. What sort of, he's a lawyer, you see. What sort of time-traveling adventures was Basiago embarking upon on the taxpayer's dime? Before discovering life on Mars, discovering life on Mars. Okay, uh, becoming Earth's ambassador to the Martians alongside President Obama. This guy ran for president! <laughs> Fuck me! 
He traveled back in time one million years, as far as I can tell, for no discernible reason. He also traveled to the year 1863 so that he could hear the Gettysburg Address firsthand. Once there, he decided to stick around until 1865 so that he could see President Lincoln be assassinated at Ford's Theater. Basiago had no intention of trying to help or warn the president. I guess he just wanted to watch a man die. This is a totally normal thing for a person to do. <laughs> Are you from the future or something? No! Who, who told you that? Memory wipe! <laughs> and because time travel works both forwards and backwards, he also visited the year 2045. You might think that going even further into the future would be useful, perhaps to bring back some helpful information and technology, and I would agree. Unfortunately, Basiago seems to have brought back nothing. Of course, if he really had visited the year 2045, he probably could have just looked up the fact that he was never elected president and given up on his pointless and impossible dream. So, did Basiago and Obama really venture to Mars back in the 1980s? Why are we even asking this question, Kevin? The Obama administration denied it. Why did they even do that? Why would you even dignify this with a response? It's like when people on Twitter like ask or like criticize or do something. I'm just like, on the off chance that I see, even see it, I'm not going to reply. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, yes, that's a great point. It's like, no. Just, just, it's not even worth replying. But that's, of course, what they'd say. A group of investigative journalists are still working to uncover the truth. Oh, and if you're wondering, America's teleporters aren't like the death machines from Star Trek. Basiago acknowledged that such a means of transportation would simply kill you, and he said that what they used was more like a wormhole. Clearly, the man knows his science, so I think we should look into that a little more and find out why Obama isn't being so forthcoming about his journeys to Mars. Baron Trump's marvelous underground journey. Wait, is Baron Trump the young one or the old one? There's the older Trump. The, the, I don't know, he looks like he's in his 40s. Then there's the younger Trump, who's just a kid, right? Is this the young one? If there's anything I've learned from Fox News, it's the importance of being fair and balanced. <laughs> Didn't Fox News just agree to a like, $750 million settlement with that voting machine company? <laughs> God damn, 750 mil. Oh, oh no, Rupert Murdoch, what a shame. <laughs> Bell end, allegedly. Oh, wait, they dropped that as the channel's official motto after Trump was elected. They really did that. Well, I'm going to be fair and balanced anyway, so if I'm going to talk about one time travel conspiracy involving a Democratic president, it's only fair that we also go into a time travel conspiracy involving his Republican successor. Honestly, this theory is way cooler. The only evidence we have that Obama traveled to Mars is the word of Basiago and one of his lunatic friends, but there's some more compelling evidence that President Trump may actually be a time traveler. And it once again all starts with Nikola Tesla, because of course it f does. Bing, 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 bong, 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 bong. Get those lights off! Bing, 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 bing. But this time, there's a way better reason for it, I swear. When Tesla died in 1943, the FBI ordered the Office of Alien Property Custodian to seize all of his research papers. <laughs> It's not alien property custodian. I could mean like aliens, like, um, uh, like illegal immigrants. Is that what we call, is that what an alien is? It's something like that. But Tesla probably wasn't an illegal immigrant. It was Nikola fucking Tesla. <laughs> it's aliens, like gray men? I don't know. I don't care. Let's move on. Hopefully, it's obvious, especially since there was a world war going on at the time. But just to be clear, alien like Trump doesn't want in America, so it is immigrants. Big brain? Not alien like Obama allegedly met on Mars. Once the papers were seized, they needed to call on the best and brightest to examine Tesla's work to ensure that it wouldn't be a threat if they fell into enemy hands. Tesla had talked an awful lot about developing a death ray, and the FBI certainly wouldn't want such a device to fall into the hands of the Soviets. They called in an engineering professor from MIT by the name of Dr. Dr. John G. Trump, the uncle of one Donald J. Trump. Dr. Trump looked over Tesla's work and concluded that the final 15 years of the famous inventor's work was pretty much useless. What the fuck is this? He said that it was speculative and philosophical, often concerned with the production and wireless transmission of power, but did not include new, sound, workable principles or methods for realizing such results. Following World War II, some of Tesla's papers mysteriously disappeared, and to this day, nobody really knows what happens to them. Just to be clear, all of that stuff, so far, century and can be confirmed from actual reputable sources rather than conspiracy blogs. Random side note, in researching Donald Trump's family tree, I learned that both his father and grandmother had also got the middle name Christ. <laughs> Who the f*** does that? It's a good question. <laughs> On the less verifiable stuff, it is believed Dr. Trump is one is the one that misappropriated Tesla's secret papers. You can't be serious. <laughs> what, are they in a safe at Mar-a-Lago? Those papers include a blueprints for a time machine, which then passed down to Donald. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. We're fully in conspiracy theory town now. And he and his son have been going on time-traveling adventures ever since. Not the son he named after himself or the son that he wishes he didn't have. The other son. <laughs> Wait, there's, there's Donald Trump. Oh, of course there's Donald Trump Jr. There's Baron Trump, because we just mentioned him. And there's other Trump. Is it Mike Trump? Michael Trump? Oh, I don't know. That's not my problem. It's yours. I guess actually building the time machine must have taken a while because it's his son, Baron, that he's taking on those adventures. What, you want proof of that claim? Well, look no further than the book Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, published in 1893 by Ingersoll Lockwood. The adventure begins in Russia and Baron Trump is guided on his journey by the master of all masters, a man known simply as Don. Artwork in the book depicting Baron Trump shares eerie similarities to Baron Trump as well. Lockwood wrote three books featuring Baron Trump, the first installment being titled The Last President. In that book, New York is thrown into a state of uproar following the election of an outsider candidate that the majority of Americans hate it. Because, remember, in America, winning the popular vote doesn't matter, so you can win even if the majority of people actually hate you. When rioting ensues, the first building to fall victim to their attacks is a major hotel on Fifth Avenue, the current location of Trump Tower. This is, is this just a hell of a coincidence, or is this just the conspiracy theory that people have made up and there was no book? Because this is a big coincidence. This is, this is a lot of coincidences, if it is like a real book. Are these books proof that Donald Trump will win his re-election in 2024 and become the last president? No, and no. These books are real, as are their contents, but it's all just a combination of coincidence and misinterpretation. To start, Baron Trump isn't the character's name. Though commonly called Little Baron Trump, his proper name is Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump, and the Baron and Baron is his official title by birth. Also, Baron Trump is spelled with two R's. Then there's the master of all masters known as Don. Again, Don is not actually his name. It's a Spanish honorific like Don Juan, Don Quixote, or Don Flamenco. The character's full name is Constantino Bartolomeo. St <laughs> Strefalo Figuanariusfum. <laughs> Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Or Don Fum for short. That's his real name. What the fuck? <laughs> Even the location of Trump Tower is merely a coincidence. Well, not really a coincidence, but not a reference to Trump's hotel either. Fifth Avenue is just where that sort of shit goes. If it was meant to reference anything specific, it would likely have been talking about the original Waldorf Astoria, Astoria Hotel that was built on Fifth Avenue the same year the Baron Trump book was published. Oh yes, and there's also the matter of Tesla's missing papers. I know I said everything at the start was true, but that was a sort of half-truth. The papers that went missing weren't any of the originals, they were copies that had been sent to the US Air Force to re-examine claims of a death ray. It's still weird that they disappeared, but all of the original papers are in a museum in Yugoslavia totally accounted for. While any time travel conspiracy is obviously bullshit, what makes this one particularly interesting is how few lies are involved. The Baron Trump books existed and Dr. Trump really examined Tesla's work on behalf of the government, which can all be easily verified from legitimate sources. All it takes is the omission of a few key details. <laughs> Like time travel not being possible, and suddenly you can spin a wild narrative that almost sounds believable. But at least this conspiracy taught me a very valuable lesson as a writer. Lockwood has demonstrated that if you're going to refer to a character by a nickname anyway, you may as well give them some completely unpronounceable name that's 30 syllables long. And thank you for watching. And it once again all starts with Nikola Tesla because of course it f does. Bing 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 bong 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 bong. Get those lights off. Bing 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 bing.